In the second episode, I'm going to show you how to program the LEU car using Python. I will show you how to get the ultrasonic unit distance, the camera images, and how to get the MPU data all into Python. I will also be showing you how to code the obstacle avoidance mode. The first thing we need to do is to download and install Spider IDE. Spider is a free and open source scientific environment for Python. It comes with Python so we don't have to install it separately. Next, we need to create a folder where we will be storing our Python codes for the Elegoo car. I created Python scripts folder under Elegoo folder that I created earlier. When we start Spider, it looks something like this, with three panes. The one on the left is the code editor. This one is the console where we can type commands and get the results of our code execution. This pane is used for various purposes, but I use mostly the variable explorer. All variables used in the code and their values acquired during the code execution are stored in this explorer. We can close the panes that we will never use by unchecking them in the view menu. We can also change the colors of the spider environment by going to tools, then preferences, then appearance. I like the white background for a cleaner look, so I'm going to change the default background to white and restart spider. I'm going to change the name of the default template file to my code. I like to divide my code into sections. Spider allows to define sections by comments that start with the hash sign followed by 2% signs. The first part of a code is to load all libraries used by the code. Python comes with its own standard libraries or modules to enable its standard commands and functions. But there are hundreds of other libraries created by the Python community of developers. I like to clear the console pane from previous execution messages and also to clear the variable explorer from previous variables. For that, I will need to load get ipython module that allows interaction with the IDE and use magic functions for clear and reset commands. Next, I will create the main part of the code with a simple example, x equals 2 plus 2. After running it, we can see that the console pane got cleared up. The variable explorer now shows x as an integer type with a value of 4. Next, we'll connect to the car's camera and capture its image. An image is an array of values defining the intensity of pixel basic colors. To work with arrays, we need to load the numpy library. To work with images, we also need the OpenCV library CV2. To access the URL link with the camera image, we need the URL open module from URL lib request library. Next, I'll create a simple code of capturing the image. Each communication command for the car's Wi-Fi will be numbered using the cmd underscore no global counter. It has to be initialized outside of functions before its use in other parts of our code. We will define a function capture. Because we are going to modify the global command counter inside this function, we need to declare the counter as a global variable. Then, we'll increment it by 1. Print the command number followed by its description on the screen. In this case, the command is called capture image. Then, we open the URL where the ESP32 module keeps its captured camera images. We read the current image into a variable called IMG. Then, we convert this variable into a numpy array of 8-bit unsigned integers. Then, we decode the image and show it on the screen in a separate window. In case if we need to do more work on the image outside of this function, we will return the image as an output of this function. Now, in the main part of the code, we will create an infinite while loop with only one command inside it to capture the camera image and display it on the screen. Let's see how it works. First, not to forget, we will connect to the Elegoo network and launch the program. Yeah, we can see the camera images captured in real time. Next, I will create a two-way Wi-Fi communication link with the car for sending commands to the car and receiving data from it. I will use the socket library for that. I will also use the sys library to catch communication errors and interrupt the code when those errors occur. First, I'll create a socket object with the name car. Then, I'll try to connect to it using the IP address and the port number specified in the LGU document. In case of an error, the accept block will print the error message and exit the code. Next, I'll try to read the data from the car. After that, I will close the connection. Closing the socket is important for the next code run to prevent hanging when the code tries to connect to the already open car socket. Let's run our code. The code executed without errors. It was able to connect to the car and receive heartbeat as the data. The variable explorer now shows new variables, their types, and values. Next, I will create a function for sending a command to the car and receive the car's response. 
For that, I need two additional libraries, the JSON library and the regular expression library RE. There is a neat trick in Spider that allows to collapse each section of a code to just its title. It doesn't disable these sections, it just hides them to make the whole code look less intimidating. Simply move the cursor to the left of each section title, wait for the down arrow to appear, and then click on it. To bring a code section back, click on the arrow next to its title again. I will collapse all code parts except for the command function. I will call this function cmd. It will take two required input arguments, sock for the socket name and do for the command action. It will also take three optional input arguments, what, where, and at. Their default values will be empty strings. Each command will be numbered by the global counter cmd underscore no, which we already created before the image capturing function. We will increment this counter by one every time the cmd function is called. First, we will create the command message variable msg as a dictionary. The dictionary in Python has the same syntax as JSON, which is used by the car's communication protocol. Just like JSON, the Python's dictionary uses keys as quoted strings followed by columns and values, all inside the brace. The first key of each command is letter H, followed by the command name in the string format to uniquely identify each command and avoid confusion which response belongs to which command. Here, we will use our sequential command counter converted to the string format as a unique command name. Next, we analyze the do argument of our function. It specifies the command action in the string format. We will use simple keywords like move, stop, rotate, measure, and check to identify each action. The second key of each command is letter n, followed by an existing command number assigned by the communication protocol to each action. For example, the command to move the car is number 3. For the command move, the value of the argument what is obvious, it is car. I will add some spaces before and after the word car for formatted printing. For the command move, we need to know the value of the argument where. There are four choices here, forward, back, left, and right, which are encoded by the D1 key of the command message. The forward direction is encoded by the D1 value of 3. The back direction is encoded by the D1 value of 4. The left direction is encoded by the D1 value of 1, and the right direction is encoded by the D1 value of 2. Next, we need to specify the speed of the requested movement with the key D2. The speed is given by the input argument at. Finally, we will add a space at the end of the string variable where for the formatted printing later. Another possible value of the argument do is stop. The Elgoo communication protocol doesn't have a command for such action. So, I will use the command n1 to set the motor rotation speed to zero. Another possible value of the argument do is rotate, which applies to the ultrasonic unit of the car. For this action, I will use the protocol command n5, which controls the server motor of this ultrasonic unit. The key d2 specifies at the angle of the rotation, which I will pass through the function argument at. Another possible value of do is measure. We can measure two things, the distance to the obstacle, given by the ultrasonic unit, and the motion parameters, given by the MPU. The input argument what specifies what we want to measure. I will assign keywords distance and motions for these measurements. The Elegoo communication protocol assigned the N21 command with a D1 value of 2 to the measurement of distance. In episode 1, I created a command numbered 6 in the car's main Arduino code to enable reading the MPU data. So, I will assign the value 6 to the N key of the command message for measuring the motion. Finally, I will enable the variable do to have the variable check. It implies checking if the car was lifted off the ground. The communication protocol uses the N23 command for that. To send the command message to the car through Wi-Fi, I need to convert it to the string format first. I will do that using the JSON dumps function. Then I will print the command message on the screen starting with its sequential number followed by the keywords do, what, where, and at. Instead of the default new line ending of the print statement, I will use a colon ending to enable printing the car's response on the same line. Next, I will send the command message to the car and create an infinite while loop waiting for the car's response. If the received response contains underscore, that is a correct response, and we exit the loop. Next, I will extract everything between the underscore and the right brace in the response, where the data should be. I will use a regular expression for that. Then, I will convert the strings OK and TRUE to a numerical value of 1, and the string FALSE to a numerical value of 0. 
I will handle the response to the command to get the MPU data separately because the MPU data contains six values separated by commas. First, I will split the response along each comma into a list of strings. Then, I will convert these strings into integers using the list comprehension method, which is like an inline for loop. At the same time, I will divide each integer by 16384 to convert the corresponding MPU parameters to units of G, where G is the gravity of Earth. I will convert all other responses to integer. Finally, I will print the response on the same line as the command message and return it as the output of our CMD function. To test a few commands, I will modify the main part of the code. I will request the car to rotate the ultrasonic unit to 90 degrees, which is straight, then to 30 degrees, which is to the right, then to 150 degrees, which is to the left. After each rotation, I will request the measure distance. After that, I will request the car to rotate the ultrasonic unit back to 90 degrees, that is straight, and request the MPU data. At the same time, I will monitor the serial port of the main board of the car using the USB connection to the computer. I need to open the main INO file and enable the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE. This will open up a new pane at the bottom of the screen. Next, I will position the spider window right above the Arduino serial monitor window and launch the Python code. Let's have a closer look of what happened in the spider console and the serial monitor windows during the code execution. Our Python code connected to the car socket first. Then, it received a heartbeat. Then, it sent the commands to rotate the ultrasonic unit and measure the distance. The results were reported on the same line after the colon. The last request was to receive the MPU data. The car responded with six values, all of which are close to zero except for the third value, which represents the car's vertical acceleration. As expected, this value is close to 1G. At the same time, the car printed its responses in the serial monitor of the window of the Arduino IDE. When I looked closer at the reported distances, I noticed that they were about 6 centimeters shorter than what I measured with a ruler. Next, I'm going to subtract 1G from the vertical acceleration and plot all MPU data in real time. For that, I will need PyPlot from the matplotlib. I will position the camera window next to the MPU data plot window on the screen. I will also disable the waiting function for the camera window to speed up the code. Next, I will subtract 1G from the vertical acceleration, which is the third parameter of the rest list. To hold all MPU parameters received from the car during the code execution, I will create a global numpy array, AG. I will create a list of MPU parameter names to use in the plot legend. Then, I will create a plot window, position it, and resize it to fit next to the camera window on the screen. The setGeometry function is only valid for the Qt5 backend of matplotlib. By default, Spider will plot graphics in its own plot pane. To make the plot appear in its own window, go to Tools, Preferences, Python Console, Graphics, Graphics Backend, and change it to Qt5. Next, I will create the function plt underscore update to plot the MPU data. The input to this function will be six most recent MPU parameters received from the car. The first thing I need to do inside this function is to add the most recent MPU parameters to the AG array using the numpy's vertical stack function. Then, I will clear the plot and plot each of the six MPU parameters stored in the AG array as a separate line with a corresponding label from the AG underscore name list. Then, I will need to pause to give time to plot my graphs. Finally, I will modify the main part of my code to have a for loop that will capture the camera image and receive the MPU data 100 times. After exiting the loop, I will compute the average of the six MPU parameters stored in the AG array. After launching the program, I can see both the camera and the plot windows. The plot is being updated in real time with the MPU data received from the car. All MPU parameters are slightly offsetted from zero. The code computed the averages of the parameters at the end. I'll subtract them from the MPU data received from the car. Let's rerun our code. I can see two plots, figure 1 and figure 2. All six parameters are nicely centered around zero. Next, I need to add a command to close all plots before the code execution. 
Let's try it. Now I see only one plot figure one, which is good. I will lift the car to see how the MPU parameters change. Yeah, they changed a lot. Next, I will add the code for self-driving with obstacle avoidance. I will need the time module. In the main part of the code, I will specify the speed for the car and the rotation angles for the ultrasonic unit. The list dist will hold distances measured by the ultrasonic unit at the corresponding rotation angles. I will also specify the minimum allowed distance to the obstacle. At the very beginning, I want the car to rotate its ultrasonic unit to 90 degrees, which is straight. I will place the remaining commands inside an infinite while loop. Inside the while loop, I will first capture the camera image. Then, I will check if the car was lifted off the ground, and if it was, I will exit the loop. After that, I will request the MPU data and plot it. Next, I will measure the distance to an obstacle ahead. If it is below the minimum allowed distance, I will order the car to stop and rotate its ultrasonic unit to the right and to the left while measuring the distance to the obstacles in those directions. If either the right obstacle distance or the left obstacle distance exceeds the minimum distance, I will order the car to turn in the direction of the longer distance. If neither distance exceeds the minimum distance, I will order the car to back off first and then to move it in the direction of the furthest obstacle. The time sleep for 0.3 seconds sets the time limit for turning and backing off. To stop the code, I will simply lift the car off the ground. Let's see how our obstacle avoidance code works. In the next episode, we will be adding some intelligence to the robot.